Yeah, it's tremendous. And the innovation that has happened in terms of the products, the processed products, has been phenomenal. So we have a panel today over here. Moderator, Mr. Manish Mule, Chief Executive Officer of Alana Sons. We have uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Jasmeet uh, from uh, the Tips Frankie. Tips Frankie goes a long way and very close to my heart because I'm from Bombay and that's what I grew up eating. We have uh, Ms. Zoya Alam from uh, the IB Group. And we have uh, Mr. Pedro Sinus uh, representing Viscofan from Spain. And we have Mr. Nagesh from uh, uh, Nikanti Seafoods. So uh, with that, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Manish Mule to open the discussion and the panel. <clears throat> so thank, thank you so much for setting it up. Uh, uh, the, the theme of, of this uh, conclave is about learn, showcase, invest, and network. And uh, in order for the theme about processing for prosperity, one of the key pillars of food industry is also about innovation and quality assurance. So I feel privileged along with the panel members to be able to talk about it. And I'll try and invite as much participation as possible because these are the uh, lighthouse of their category that they work into. And uh, as, 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 as is introduced by uh, my colleague in Ansen An Young, uh, I'll start with uh, Jasmeet because uh, he has an outlet near to my house again. <laughs> and I'm sure after this call, he will gonna call the guy and... Yes, Great. Jasmeet, you have changed the paradigm of the industry, the way the distribution has happened, the way your reach to the consumer is. And people, despite having this health and wellness agenda in their mind, I say huge, Pull, do you? What do you think is the innovation, uh, in the innovation role in this, which has has played? Uh, still, good morning to all of you. All. Uh, see, we we are a brand which actually people associate with legacy. So that's 54 years of the brand. So I think innovation has come more from our end consumers, and they've helped us grow. What basically we stuck to was Dil Se Dil Ka connection. What we stuck to was the Indian palette. And what we innovated was we moved ahead with time. Where it comes to food tech, where it comes to um, fast service, where it comes to consumer behavior, where it comes to CRMs, where it comes to data management. So innovation has been a continuous journey. But I think for us, we've been very lucky with the that uh, our late father, Mr. Amajit Tib, he hit the taste right. So for us, it was more about getting to people and s maintaining taste and more of innovation. Only thing with the generation changing, yes, we've upped our ante when it comes to service, when it comes to speed of service, and definitely maintaining quality has been the biggest task what we've done. Very well said. Uh, I'm gonna invite Zoya now uh, on this discussion. Uh, emerging CEO Awardee, and yesterday's CEO table, she was absolutely there. I believe that her, you, your company is into multiple sectors. You're into chicken, number two, number three, no, chicken company, a very <coughs> strong play into poultry, and also an aqua feed. Mm -hmm. Having this kind of a portfolio that you have, what is next? How do you look at your strategy when you talk about building your business further? Um, see, before, um, the consumer, the product reaches the consumer, there is an entire back-end process which goes on. So when we talk about the back-end, uh, first I'd like to introduce my company because that is what, uh, we are more so in the B2B segment, and when I say B2B, we are completely into, we are the leading players in the poultry segment, followed by aqua feed and edible oil, we are the leaders in the country. Now, when I talk about innovation, before, like I said, it reaches the consumer, the connect, the quality, the security, the food safety, everything, all the aspects are taken first. It has to be taken care at the production side. When I say production, there are two ways of farming. I mean, if I go too technical, it will be a very long discussion, but we have to emphasize on the quality of the meat yield, the consistent quality of the meat of the chicken. And uh, technology plays, of course, a very vital role. The breed, which, which is the beginning of the product, 
makes a big difference. So we've, over the period of years, we've intensively worked with the breed genetics. And I would say government has been very supportive in supporting that cause. And we've partnered with the world's leader for breed company, which is Aviation. And I would say if seven years or eight, 10 years back, if one kilo of bird needed two kilo of uh, 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 feed now it takes 1.4 kilos of feed to get that one kilo of meat yield in the bird so that's the technology which has improved over a period of time so there is an entire story to the bird before it actually reaches the consumer understandable but uh, to further build on this discussion uh, innovations plays a very important role in productivity or increasing the application of what your products are? Wh what are the key things plays in your mind? It is both. When I say it, it innovation enhances the productivity, also it enhances the second, oh, you, you mentioned? The application has to, huh. you know, uh, earlier chicken used to be only chicken, then there were yes. multiple applications. The value addition value that value you talk addition about. Is what I meant. So yeah. value addition comes after the processing line. So that is when I said before the consumer, before it reaches to the end consumer, the value addition of the chicken which is done, that's a separate segment. But before that is a complete backward integration call, which the companies like us have to really built on from the feed to the breed to the technology in bringing that cycle from 45 days to 30 days. So it's, it's, it's that entire segment which works hand in hand. I understand. I'll move on to Pedro, my friend there from Viscofan. Uh, he is trying to help us change our habits and no one knows that better than him that he is working tirelessly the last 10 years. Pedro, what's your take on food safety? How do we Indian consumers are take it as a, as, a, as a priority? And in terms of how, are, how do you think the palates are changing over a long yeah. period of time? Okay, let me, uh, my name is Pedro, I'm representing Biscofan here and I'm based out of Bangalore for the last uh, three years. Um, Viscofan uh, is the largest casing company in, in the world. Uh, casings or coverings are made or are used in the sausage line in the further processing plants of meat processing uh, companies. Um, the reason why we are here in India is that uh, the market is rather small if we compare it to other markets, correct? Um, if you see Sri Lanka, for example, they consume three times more sausages than India. So 25 million people in Sri Lanka consumes three times more sausages than 1.3 billion in, in India. So there's a huge potential here. So the, the reason why we're here is to uh, encourage the industry to go into further processing because we believe that further processing, or we believe and we have seen this in, the, in other markets in the world, especially in Southeast Asian markets, further processing is giving prof profits to poultry companies, uh, is giving safety food to consumers, and um, it's also helping sustainability because poultry companies can use part of the, of the uh, chicken to produce value-added products, and, um, and we believe that uh, also uh, it helps companies to uh, diversify, increase profits, as I said, investment, better jobs, better technology, and this is something which is important. If we see the technology that is installed in India right now, for at least for the sausage perspective, we see that the, there is a gap of 80% between the installed capacity which is installed, thanks to the PLI incentives from the, from the ministry, and the effective uh, production that is going to the market. So the potential is there, the, the capacity and the, the technology is there, uh, technology coming from different parts of the world, sta state-of-the-art facilities are there in India ready to supply this kind of, uh, this kind of products which at the end, in, uh, in this particular product, sausages are cooked, so safety is there. Uh, there is no microbiolog microbiological growth happening in any case. It's easy to use, it's convenient, um, and it's the way in which uh, uh, many, or many people are consuming protein uh, uh, at, at, at an affordable price in many countries. <coughs> I just wanted to touch upon the topic in the introduction he talks about uh, vegetarianism and non-vegetarianism and uh, the question to you is that you are here for the last 10 years. Do you see a trend changing? Uh, because I see in one of those reviews we said 78% people do have 
uh, non-veg into their diet, whether it is egg also, because there's another category in India called eggitarian. So do you see it changing? And when you work around your business, do you see the scale coming up over a period of time? And innovation plays a role, or food safety plays a role? Well, what we see is that uh, uh, poultry companies are investing in primary processing units uh, all across the country. So that is a message that they see a market there. Um, what we see also, you, you go to Zomato or Zwiggy, uh, and the, the first dish is uh, biryani, chicken biryani. The second one is uh, chicken fried rice. Um, so people are ordering non veg food, and especially young generations are uh, becoming more conscious about the protein uh, consumption. And it's also a trend that we see over the, uh, in other countries, like as a country is developing, the consumption of protein is growing as well. Uh, so there is a correlation there. And yes, uh, um, if we see the, the numbers, uh, the, 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 the number of primary processing plants which are in, in, in place in, in India is growing year by year. And this year, poultry industry is going to grow 10% uh, according to Chrysil, one of the rating agencies. So yeah, poultry is, uh, is growing. You go to the figures of Food Agricultural Organization from the uh, UN. They say that from the period 2020 to 2029, India is going to be the fastest growing market in the world in terms of poultry retail consumption. And if you see the numbers, India is the second largest poultry production meat product uh, country in, in Asia after China. Uh, so yeah, uh, the, the market is growing. Our market uh, especially uh, is growing over the last two years, for example, 20, 25% every year. We are expecting to keep on growing. Uh, and to keep on pushing. You see now Starbucks, for example, launching a sausage wrap. You see cloud kitchens like uh, Rebel Foods launching sausages in wraps in their brand Fasos. Pizza players like Domino's, Pizza Hut, and all the pizza players adding sausages and pepperonis into, the, into, into their uh, menus. So yes, it's growing, and, and uh, food service is going to be one of the um, growth drivers for, for this product at the yeah, Great, great to see your optimism. I will involve now Mr. Venkat Nikanti also, largest uh, uh, seafood manufacturer in the country. Uh, sir, do you see the same thing playing out in your category? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, in fact, my, uh, my name is Nagesh. I'm the finance director of Nekanti Seafoods Limited. We are from Andhra Pradesh. Uh, Andhra Pradesh happens to be the biggest uh, seafood uh, processing and exporting state in the country, which we have about 60% of the market share is from Andhra Pradesh, being the coastal uh, belt and uh, aquaculture belt. Uh, the number of quantity of shrimp produced is highest. Of course, we buy from other states like Gujarat, Orissa, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, and other places also. But we are totally into exports, not into the domestic market. We are almost a 40-year-old company. Our major market is USA, and the rest of the world, Europe, and other Middle East, Far East. Off late, we are exporting to China and Russia also. US happens to be the biggest importer from India for the seafood is considered. Uh, very recently, a South American country called Ecuador is competing on a high basis with mm -hmm. Indian seafood because their proximity to US, the flight charges are less for them and the transit time is less from them. So mm -hmm. it's a challenging time for the Indian seafood sector. But we are hopeful that it's only a passing cloud and uh, the quality of seafood in India is much superior and higher than that of Ecuador. Let us see how it turns out to be. I understand. Last time when we made, I went to Andhra in the month of April when they had a run show. I'm talking about uh, Tamil Nadu, both Andhra, sorry, Andhra as well as uh, uh, Telangana. Okay. Uh, and uh, the discussion that time from the seafood manufacturer was also about a little bit, as you say, uh, headwinds. Uh, from then and now, around six months, uh, what has, do you think is changing or is around the corner? And does the manufacturing processes in our industry is giving an advantage to you over a period of time and that will become a, a critical edge for us to do better? No, the biggest challenge now is the American market. There's a slowdown in the US market because of various factors like inflation and other things. So the purchasing power in the American market has come down. 
the retail sales and all these things. So it could have issue, one issue, compete, uh, competition, but at the same time, unless and until America improves in a better way, their numbers, their uh, interest costs, and so many other factors. So until then, we'll be having challenging times. And added to that, we are already into anti-dumping duty being paid in US markets. Very recently, they have started initiating a countervailing duty on Indian shrimp, along with other countries. We have to see how it turns out to be. And uh, wh what is your view about the India market itself? Do you think that the consumption here is people are taking into yes, it is this growing, category? No doubt about it. Uh, the purchasing power in India has gone up. And uh, after the COVID times, mm. uh, the sales have gone up. And a lot of uh, online sales are happening with uh, Licious, Captain Fresh, and other companies. But it is still in the infant stage. Uh, it takes a little more time because the logistics, mm -hmm. cold chain, and all these have to be established. And uh, it's uh, all these days it was very unorganized. Slowly uh, it should become an organized play. Once it happens, uh, the Indian domestic market will be very good. Oh, nice to know that. Jasmid, I'll bring the conversation to you again. Uh, what is your take on, you compete with a lot of multinationals, of course. True. KFC, just name it. Yeah, they compete with me. Yes. Yes, I appreciate. Sorry, I, I, that, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm too, I'm too much of made in India. <laughs> that's the, that's I come with spirit. that pride. I'm sorry. Absolutely, no, no, no. You should be proud of. That's a true Indian speaking right there. Uh, wh how, what is your competitive advantage with them? Made in India. <laughs> that's my advantage. Uh, so you are very near to the palate, and therefore your ability to uh, no, a it's, to it's it's palate values, it's uh, evolving trends. It is generations growing up with Tips Frankie. It is. Us knowing the market, and no disrespect to all the chains, I'm sorry, I was joking, anybody from all the competitive chains, apologies, but uh, what I mean is, you know, the Indian palette, you can say emerging trends, you can say evolving trends, Indian palette is quite consistent. Indian palette is still today feeling, eat with your tongue, goes first to the heart. So you still, very good said, very well said. So this. we don't eat with our stomach. It's from the heart. We still want to have, I mean, for us the biggest advantage is I'll have three generations coming to my particular store. Like you just said, you have a store right next to you. So one of our stores is uh, in central Mumbai and I know three generations who go there and they refuse to eat anybody, any of my, uh, any of the tips Frankie in any other stores and they say it because this is where we grew up. So the advantage is we maintain quality. The advantage is we've been value for money. And the advantage has been that we, te we customize. It's always been that, okay, <coughs> our SOPs are standardized, but it's never been that you come to a store and you say, I want just a small example. Let's say, I don't want onions. My guy is going to say, no worries. <coughs> There's somebody who's going to come and say, I want extra the magic tips masala. We'll say, no worries. We never charge extra when somebody's going to add more masala. We just said, de do yaar. There are so many people I know, you know, who come and say, we want extra egg in it. And if the guy knows each other, we'll say, okay. Now, obviously, with the scalability of operations, national operations, Dubai operations, UK operations, uh, systems, controls, software, technology is coming to play. But ours, uh, if I can use the word I, my speech, my talk to everybody in TIBS is that serve from the heart. Never serve Frankie's from there. Because there'll be somebody who's eaten a Frankie, and if you alter the taste, he's not going to come back, and he's not going to forgive you. So I said the biggest advantage is telling that we are your things. So if you see our slogan also, which uh, God bless his soul, my late father, the inventor of the word Frankie, he, always, he said in 1970, and the slogan still says, I love Frankie, so will you. So it's about you guys, it's about everybody who's eating a Frankie, it's not about us. So as long as consumers know that, as long as people know that we can come to our Frankie store and get what we want, that's about it. Secondly, I'm sorry, I'm going to take a minute more. Uh, it's very important that our consumer knows that it's safe to eat a tips, Frankie. So the systems and processes we have with the icons of this industry and all our vendors and all our suppliers are very stringent. Our food auditors, our hygiene standards, our control measures are very high. In fact, I'll tell you, uh, quickly a small story. I was at one of my stores and 
there was a three-year-old or a four-year-old crying, and I see a mother take a chicken piece from the tips Frankie and serve the child. And I asked her, I said, it might be spicy. It might be this. So, and she says, who are you? I said, no, I'm just a consumer. She said, I'm not worried. And I asked her why. She said, because this chicken is from a tips rank. Great, great yeah. story. Uh, tell me, you still want to protect this whole formula there? You say, okay, I will only supply from your Andheri outlet or Andheri no, manufacturing uh, unit to everywhere else as we expand all over the world? No, we've got commissaries all over. Uh, we've got executive chefs in all the commissaries. The secret is the Frankie Masala, the tips from Masala, which goes from Mumbai. We also have, are getting into uh, a cold chain management where, you know, trends in cooking has evolved, trends in meat and poultry processing have evolved. So people are able to reach our standards. People are able to give us the same consistency. Say my Andhra operations are number two to Maharashtra operations. My Delhi operations are there, our Goa operations are there, uh, Nagpur is there, um, Bangalore, Chennai. So we've got the same quality of meat, same vendors, able to supply with the same quality standards. So we are, we are, we've made an SOP, we've made changes, we've evolved the recipes to such an extent that with technology we are still able to get the same taste. So it's all standardizing the taste with evolution. Great. Zoya, so coming to you, um, what are the next challenges? Number one, in many industries and I, I noticed a very differentiated category that you're into which is edible oil mm -hmm. are you planning to further get into that because alana is also an edible oil yeah. and uh, we have uh, products which is are like bakery extensions mm. do you have any plans for that edible and oil we are the leading brand in uh, chhattisgarh like i mentioned before this panel started so we are definitely coming in Madhya Pradesh very soon, starting January. We are launching our soya bean oil there. Also, we are planning to come up with sunflower oil. So that's going to be our launch in the next three, four months. Of course, to start with expanding from Chhattisgarh to MP at this point in time. And Pan India, yes, there is a vision, but that is going to take some time to reach a make out a Pan India brand. However, when I talk about poultry, to pick up on the point where he left. Pedro mentioned that uh, poultry has a, uh, poultry companies are now getting into the primary processing. Yes, very much we are getting into primary <coughs> processing and this is the time because 87% of the poultry today operates in the wet market. It is completely unorganized sector and to make a switch now is the time because we know that we are aiming for a trillion dollar economy and to get there we need this sector organized that's the ask from the government that we've made multiple times and yet in yesterday's forum also they've been supportive but we need a little more push to bring in the technology here for the forward looking as well as for the backward looking also because there is far more Sorry, there are farmers who are, who needs to be upgraded to modern poultry. So there is a back end, there is a mix of back end technology upgradation and the front end. And that's when this industry is going to completely change to an organized sector. Very well said. Pedro, another, last question to you. Cold cut and ready to eat. What's your take on that? And what's the future in India for both of them? Okay, that's a quite a straightforward question. <laughs> well, obviously, we are here because we believe in this market, and we believe, and we believe because we have experienced this uh, in the past. Um, China was at the same point India it is right now in terms of sausages and cold cuts in 2008. Now is you know, India is 10,000 uh, metric tons uh, per year. China is 100,000 uh, metric tons per year. Uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, the same case. Sri Lanka, the same case. So as long as uh, the primary processing uh, companies are starting to uh, change the mindset of the, of the consumer, wet markets are starting to modernize or organize uh, uh, further, it will, the, the market will grow. Another challenge that we have here is that um, if you look at the value for money of the sausages that are now in the market, you can find in the retail market sausages at the range of 600 rupees, Godrej, Venkis. Sausages, 1,000 rupees per kg, fresh to home, lease use. But the fresh market, boneless chicken, is 400 rupees, 350 rupees. 
So our mm. substitutive product, we, 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 companies are not able to really offer something that are attractive for the consumer. Um, the way this market was developed in other, mar in other, in other territories is by using ingredients that are putting the price at the same level as fresh chicken it is right now. I was with our distributor in Sri Lanka last, last week. He said, when chicken prices go up, sausage consumption goes up. When chicken prices goes down, sausage consumption goes down. So there is a, uh, there is a gap there, and um, I hope that we, um, what we do in Biscofan is we don't only supply the casings, but also we help from the technical perspective, uh, from a product development perspective. We try to replicate whatever has been successful in other countries in India with our customers and grow together because at the end this is a long term and the more sausages they sell, the more casings they will require. So it's a win-win for, for everyone, no? That's a very politically correct answer. Appreciate that. Uh, sorry about that, Mr. Nag uh, Nagesh. Uh, you're from a finance background. Yes. What else do you think that our government should do to, to, make, to take us out of this industry which is in a tailwind for a longer period of time? I think it's more of a labor-intensive industry when it comes to the farming side or the processing side and other things. Earlier, there were some power subsidies and other things for the farmers, small farmers especially. If the government extends that kind of a subsidies to the power sector, which is nowadays going up on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, the bills and other things, the labor cost is going up, some sort of a helping hand to the farming community. That will give uh, the cost of production to be under control and the viability for the farming. More farmers coming into the aquaculture will be there and uh, ultimately more exports, more domestic sales and the industry growth will be there. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate everybody's uh, a huge participation and very frank and candid answer. Uh, I will just uh, throw this discussion open to the to anyone who can ask any questions to the esteemed panelist. Please, go ahead. Sir, as a consumer, just I want to ask you, like uh, nowadays, no, lots of uh, buzzwords comes into the market, like uh, traceability and all this thing. And when we talk about the meat and poultry sector, traceability becomes the, one of the biggest issues and because what happened to today consumer is na, uh, it's a half knowledge actually, right? Because what we get from the social media, we get into that thing and with the half knowledge, we just create some perceptions into that and all without knowing the facts or figures of that thing, right? So I want to know from the industry perspective side, so what we could do is when even you were also talking about the quality issues and all, back-end operations and all, so how could we maintain the quality of that meat and poultry with the, uh, you can say, the where traceability is also there, where today consumer, for example, these millennials are there, right? So they want to get, <coughs> yes, uh, whatever I'm taking it, it's very safe. Like, like Jasmeet sir also said, we maintain these uh, things and all this, the consistency of the quality, you are maintaining that. But on and all, overall, how could we go into that thing? And what academics can do actually into those segments from the management perspective point of view, not as a technology perspective point of view? Thank you. Um, very well uh, highlighted point on traceability. So traceability is the main core for, I would say, food safety. Tomorrow, today, like I said, uh, poultry is operating about 87% in the wet market. In the wet market, there is no traceability for the consumer. For the manufacturers, we are, I would say, the only company who provides the end-to-end -end traceability right from the grandparent flock to the broiler. We know exactly the, br the kind of feed the broiler has been fed, the hatchery the broiler has come in from, the grandparent flock where this, this broiler has come from. So the entire chain of traceability is something that we offer. And for the consumer, l consumer today is not aligned, I would say, or does not have that much of uh, awareness which I think we together as an industry, government and the consumer all have to work together towards it. Millennials very well said that we all get influenced by the social media, whatever looks good, everybody rushes to that. But 
food security norms have to be stringent in terms of when we talk about packaged foods when we are exporting there are many uh, rules and regulations when we have to export but when it is about domestic <coughs> consumption when we ask for a organized sector push we need to work a little more aggressive towards that so that's that's how i would take it um, just to address what you said see as a chain for us also we learn every day and more than we learning ourselves we start perforating the learning from us to down to the person making uh, the final product also we run programs for our quality control team we send them to institutions we send them to my alma mater like ihm and we try and educate them to the best of their abilities to try and see what best we can do so like she's rightly said that you know this country is evolving now everybody is getting very aware the labeling has become a very important pack when consumer picks up a product he sees the label and for us also uh, our purchase team uh, they are very stringent about learning we are trying to get to the sourcing and like she rightly said the whole breed is uh, the knowledge we are also trying to get that and see the difference it makes in a final product because at the end of the day like you rightly said media plays a big role also the consumer having the product now is much much more aware than earlier times and what do you say gen z is going to be even 10 times ahead of us when ai comes into life you know what i'm saying full fledged so yeah we are evolving we are evolving all of us yeah and i, I would like also to add on on this um Uh, as of now, I think, uh, as Soya said, uh, 90% of the market is live birds, so it's like a commodity. And as uh, also poultry companies come into primary and further processing, they can build up brands, they can uh, invest in branding, do marketing campaigns and promotions to, to create the, the loyalty to, to the consumer. And this is something which uh, also will help to create uh, the awareness consumer a good idea about the, about the brand and about the product. And another thing is that um, entering, to, entering into further processing, you are producing products uh, in a highly industrialized process, which gives you consistency. So you get the same product with the same quality following the, the, the latest uh, industrial processes with the, less, with, the, with the best technologies. No? So this is also something that will help to create uh, uh, a better, let's say, uh, uh, mindset or or image of the products in the market. Uh, actually, I have two questions. Uh, basically, there are some new regulation in the poultry field. Uh, basically, I don't know about that. So uh, people are in the sector is facing the pro problem due to th these new re regulations. So do you feel like that ki it is for the organized sector also? Is it uh, only for the unorganized sector? And my one more, ma'am. Uh, you have talked about the breed and the genetics. So should our, gov uh, our government is working or helping the organized sector or the unorganized sector in this field? Ki how we can improve the breeds in India and we, we, we could have the better yield or uh, better shelf life of the things or uh, what you expect? Okay. To take your first question about the regulations in the feed. As such, the regulations which has been imposed by the government towards the feed, it has been helpful for the industry. So there is nothing new that has popped up or come up which, which is going to hamper the consumer or the producer in any way. So that is aligned from the feed perspective. Now, if you talk about what your second question was more so on the? Hmm. So you mean the government intervention? See, I'll tell you, government is there at the back end to say ki we are there with you. But as an industry, we have to march towards our vision. We know what the challenges of the industry is. Government is there to help us. But in the breed side specifically, if I say, over the period of years, like I mentioned earlier, the FCR, or if I would say the weight gain per kilo of broiler has improved, which thereby adds on to the sustainability factor of the industry as well. So it's a wholesome picture because if 
the feed consumption goes down, the meat yield improves, it adds on to the entire backward chain, wherein you start from the agri to the processing. So it's an entire chain. And yes, the government has been there, they are aware of the genetics, but li need a little more push, as we always say. There, there definitely should be more, but now I say because we need to change the gear of the industry. We need them to really think to get this sector organized. So the focus now should be for the processing sector. Because I'll tell you what happens today in consumers' mind, like I said, they say ki agar if it's unpacked open chicken, they feel it's fresh but they don't know what's going on behind that because it's it's just out deregulated when you when we tomorrow come with the packaged chicken with all the fssi norms and all the guidelines it's a different concept altogether that's where we want to head and that's where the the comp the, the the country should head because if you compare it to any other developed nation they're all operating poultry aqua any any other sector in the organized way so that's that's what we look forward to from the government now thank you uh, as a consumer we often hear about the use of antibiotics in poultry uh, what is the usage and how bad is the situation uh, any in perspective please the situation is never bad it's again a media flu i would say rather than the consumer psyche because there was a time when during corona it was poultry chicken consumption was associated from corona it is completely um, a media flu likewise for antibiotics antibiotics are given for the health of the bird to an extent that the bird can take and it is not harmful for human consumption we are regulated in that segment so i would say for it is no threat to the to the human in any way. Absolutely no. See, now if I say antibiotics and why the broilers are fed, the broiler story starts right from grandparents. So if you have, if there was a time when media was talking about eliminating antibiotics from the grandparent flock, that means if you talk about from human perspective, our forefathers, from there up to now, it is not practically possible. So all we as an industry say is that antibiotic free, which is not harmful for human consumption. It is nowhere related. So that is the awareness when we say that we have to educate the consumers. We have to educate the consumer in every way because it's a whole, wholesome story and not just one end. Uh, I just wanted to ask about your policies on animal welfare and sustainability. Apart from food safety, the consumers are also concerned about the welfare of the animals in these industries. So with, especially with broiler and poultry, egg laying hens, uh, battery cages are a big issue. Uh, so I wanted to ask what your policies on animal welfare are. Do you, are you considering switching to cage-free housing? Especially battery cages have been banned in Europe and other parts of the world. Is there a switch? Do you see a switch in India? No, absolutely. I don't see a switch in India from cage-free. Again, I would say that's a perception which has been created. And we've spoken to the government and explained them the entire process that cage-free is, is not something that is possible for India. So don't, don't see that as coming up here. Hi, uh, Shubham here from Goddess Tyson. Uh, so I take care of real good chicken as a brand uh, and sales of it. Uh, so my question was that we all aim to convert the sector into the formal uh, organized sector. And we want all the consumers to move away from the live butcher shops and go for a package, uh, this thing. So I have two questions related to that. Uh, number one is that where do you see after five years uh, from whatever number we would be at, like five, six, seven percent, where we'll be able to reach in the next five years, and what would be the m route to it? Uh, it? Will it be D2C, e-com, uh, your uh, retail stores, own stores, franchisee stores, or 
the packed chicken or uh, product selling through the retail outlets. And um, the, th the, the second question followed with, the, with it is like, will it be in the frozen or fresh? Because my experience is that frozen doesn't sell uh, to the label uh, the fresh sells, and the fresh has its own uh, complexities. So this is something which I would like to understand your views on it. See, currently the per capita chicken consumption, if we talk about, it is about four, four, a, four and a half kilo per person today. And if you see five years behind, it was about one and a half or one kilo. Over a period of time, this per capita chicken consumption has increased. Likewise for fish and all the other meat segments. How do we see this growing ahead? Now, 10 years down the line, if you see our curve compared to all the other developed countries, they are operating at 30, 35 per capita chicken consumption. And we are today a protein deficit nation. We are a complete, and if we strive towards being Atmanirbhar, Swachh Bharat Abhyan, and all of the policies which has been laid by the government and the vision that the government has, and the vision that we as an industry player have, we have to convert the sector together. Now, how do we see, you said whether it is fresh, chilled, or frozen. Today, fresh means khula chicken, correct? Tomorrow, the future that we are talking about, organized sector, it will gradually shift to chilled. Frozen, we are far away right now. And that is not, that will take time for India to mature to that sector. So it is either chilled or fresh. Chilled and fresh is what I would say, in a, in a packaged form. That's the future of India that we need to all look forward to. And what will be the route? The route. Of course, it will be D2C. So when you say there are many players currently who are operating in the B2C segment, so is most of them are online players. But tomorrow, a year and a half down the line, when we venture into that segment, we are not only going to cater to the online sales, but it is also going to be the Horeca, the retailers, the GTs, the MTs, modern trade. Everywhere is something that we as IB Group will be penetrating. Yeah, and also if, um, if I can explain what happened, for example, in Sri Lanka for um, these products to be so popular is that there are a couple of companies there, poultry companies, Cargills and Kills, who uh, have their own outlets uh, and they are able to brand their products, promote their products and push their products to the market. So now in India we see Suguna, for example, with their own outlets, Venkis, uh, some other poultry companies coming up with uh, more modern meat outlets um, and this is a channel which will definitely help have, have the visibility of these products to, to the consumer. Hello, uh, I'm Saikesh. I'm the uh, founder for Country Chicken Co. Uh, my question is to you, Zoya. Uh, with India having almost 30% of its production, poultry production from the backyard poultry side, and we have been seeing a lot more players in the organized poultry or the broiler segment, but not much has been done in the backyard poultry segment. I would want to hear your thoughts on that. And uh, second, uh, as uh, someone was mentioning regarding the antibiotics things, there has been a public sentiment as such about the thing. Let me, let me address to your first question. Sure, sure. Yeah. So at the beginning of my conversation, I started with traditional poultry versus modern poultry. Like you said, backward poultry, there are still many players doing backward poultry or the open house farming, there are many people doing that. And there are many farmers and the companies who have made a switch from the open and the traditional poultry to the modern environmentally controlled houses. Now what happens when you switch? When you switch, there are two ways. There is one, the farmer of the, the income of the farmer grows up. Like for example, if he's earning 20 rupees per <coughs> bird in a traditional farming, while when he technologically upgrades himself to a more modernized farming, he can earn up to 40 rupees per bird and multiply that by six batches in a year. So that's the advantage and that's the shift that, like I said, the shift technologically, innovation has to be done at both ends, not just at consumer end, but at the backward end as well. So as the, as the industry, we've, we are the pioneers in the EC environmentally controlled houses, Pan India. So, uh, got your answer. 
and second regarding the uh, sentiment in market regarding the hormonal imbalance or uh, the sorry amul hormonal uh, hormonal imbalance or the antibiotic uh, usage and re- related to the gut health and these issues how do you see that sentiment to be uh, i'm aware of the poultry standards and these things but i just wanted to hear your thoughts on sentiment over over the market see sentiments are all created by media and social media hai na so we if we are educated enough and we know what's actually the truth then we we it's just a scroll at scroll down that page that's all there's nothing that you really need to give it a thought all right uh, good afternoon <coughs> so i don't have a question here uh, but uh, again this is kf siddiqui i am the business head for godrej tice in uh, the poultry side of business uh, not a question just a suggestion and and, and that's something that uh, we also as uh, being pioneers in in this uh, particular industry uh, very strongly feel about uh, i think the interaction between the various players within the industry needs to increase while while yes we might compete uh, as while we might be competitors in the market i think so we as organized players need to see this as a common cause and approach it and therefore the interaction between the various organized players irrespective of the region we are in and irrespective of uh, what part of uh, the country we are in uh, this could be formal this could be informal but yes uh, th- this this interaction between the organized players needs to go up and and that's something which is the need of the hour so that's one humble submission that uh, i think uh, is is the one thing that we should uh, work together as as an organized uh, very well said yeah. very well said uh, any more questions or yes please go ahead uh, hello everyone i am anish a btech student from niftem i i wish to ask that how big does that flexitarian shift of people you see for the industry uh, i repeat how big that flexitarian shift of people like towards plant based foods and meat you shift or uh, see for the actual meat industry well, well we, we, we we actually have been in, uh, working with uh, many of these uh, startups uh, over the last 2 or 3 years to develop also plant based uh, sausages and cold cuts and uh, they all are struggling because the spe- their expectations are not coming to to what they have in mind um so nowadays uh, unless the offering is matching the same price and quality and texture as the product that they can find regularly in the market my honest opinion is that this market this flexitarian this plant based market will not grow up at all but as the technology is developing like we have directional freezing and uh, 3d printing type things they are developing day by day and we can copy the exact texture so still you are not concerned at, at what price which price it will eventually come down anyways no um, it will come down if you get to the economies of scale to reduce the cost of the production so is i think is a is we'll see what what's go- what's happening but um at least our experience in the us for example we were supplying our casings to impossible foods last year uh, big market this year uh, almost zero uh, europe is also coming down also inflation is not helping to for the consumers to pay higher price or premium price for something they can get uh, in the traditional way as of now uh, i don't see it it's my you. my opinion i'll just add on to that point uh, you plant based chicken is what you're saying right uh, chicken fish anything ha so it's like vegetarian anda correct uska bhi trend chal raha tha vegetarian anda so see it's a segment which is a very different segment altogether competition is always welcome innovation is always welcome because when consumers have given the variety of options they actually know the fresh chicken it's always good i welcome we welcome ki please come up only when the consumer eats plant based will they know what is real chicken theek hai so welcome with open hands welcome with everything no problem let the competition come we are here to fight it out okay thank you ma'am i'll, I'll just uh, help you as a end, end consumer i meet so many people i'll we have a bunch of smart people listening to us so i'll just say it in a simple word the indian palate is divided into two categories 
One is fad and one is facts. One is fad based mindset and is fact and one is taste based mindset. To answer your question, that palette is still evolving. We are still based on taste based concept. So that I'm sure that answers you. I'm not getting into details because it's about an industry which is emerging and it's not fair as a peer for me to let any industry down. But like she rightly said, that agar raat hoigi to ya apko din ka fayda padega aur din hoigi to hi raat ka ho raha so it's a it's a choice you make you know it's a choice you make with palette it's a choice you make with uh, sometimes you might pick up the instagram and you say that it's good to have a mock meat burger you have that it's not wrong but at the end of the day if you want to be decadent you go back to the original so, so it's all on the mindset and it's all on your thought process does it answer your question yeah yeah it thanks. does thanks Great. So we had a great participation. Thank you, everyone, for the participation and really a good job of all the panelists. Very difficult question, but engaging session. Appreciate your passion and commitment to this. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I would like to conclude the session. So thank you so much. Thank you for coming and sharing your insightful. And this was indeed a very knowledgeable session for us. And uh, we would like to present the souvenirs from Ministry of Food Processing to all the panelists. And I hope the audience also enjoyed. And I, this was like one of the most engaging sessions we had since morning. A lot of questions coming up. So thank you once again. Thank you.